Well, good morning and welcome back. Today we are getting some new lectures from chapter four. Uh, today is section three and section four and section five. We last week learned about sections four one and four two, where we talked about exponential functions. We talked about uh, investments and compounding interest. Homework for that section is due today, uh, Monday the 29th at midnight, and this Friday we've got a quiz on that material as well. Next Monday we're going to have homework due on sections 4.3, 4.4, uh, 4 .4, and 4.5, and as I said today we will be getting into uh, section 4.3 to start us off. So this is on logarithmic functions. I was logged out of Zoom for some reason. Here we go. Uh, so we'll be on 4.3, which is on logarithmic functions. We'll be talking about some of their properties, and we'll be looking at relationships between uh, exponential functions and logarithmic functions. Uh, I can't understate that relationship at all. So here we go 4.3 logarithms. Okay, uh, so logarithms. Are uh, something that uh, you know you used you used to be able to. Well, you, I guess you still can find them, but you used to be able to. Uh, you used to need to use tables of logarithm values to help you with computation. Uh, you could literally turn to the back of an old book, uh, an old book in mathematics. I don't know. This is this is one. It's nice and old book. You you used to be able to just turn to the back of them, and you, you could find tables of logarithmic values. And this book even has one. Here, here's just several. <laughs> this table even. This book even has. Okay, here we go. Uh, Tables. I'm gonna go to the full camera here again. Just turn to the back of any old math book, and what do you see? Logarithms, logarithm tables. Yeah, these things are, you know, uh, quite important and uh, come up all the time. And today, instead of having a table of values, what do you have? You have a calculator, right? So you don't need a table of logarithm values anymore, but they're they're pervasive. They're all over the place. So uh, today you'll learn all about them, and you'll learn about uh, their relationship with exponentials. So logarithms are tied very closely to exponentials. Okay, that's. Uh, that's a big statement, right? It's it, you're gonna learn all about that today. It's gonna be the first thing that you learn. We've learned about exponentials, where you have where you have a base. So we usually called that B. Today I'm gonna call that A. So we have a, a number A, and we all we we said that A needed to be positive. So that's just a number that's positive. And then we raised it to some variable power. And I used to use x, but today I'm going to use y. And that'll be clear in a minute. So you take some positive number and you raise it to some variable power. And these things have this graph, which gets really, really tiny over here on the left. And it always crosses, if it's in this form, a to the y, it always crosses at the same point at 0 comma 1, and then it just blows up, it just rockets off to infinity here. Now you, the further you go to the right, the higher up it goes. So it just grows really, really fast, it's exponential in growth. We're going to look at logarithmics today, or logarithms today, which have sort of the opposite thing. Instead of going up higher and higher, faster and faster and faster, they still go up higher and higher and higher, but they go up slower and slower and slower and they grow really slowly they still are unbounded but they instead of growing faster and faster grow slower and slower 
And uh, in fact, if you took a line through the origin, the line y equals x, and you rotate this exponential around, you'd get something like this. And that is the graph of a logarithm. If you change the base then you know the, the exponential grows more slowly or faster if you change the base. Um, but there's a logarithm that is the reflection across this line of that exponential and we usually say it's the logarithm with the same base that's what we say log and then we subscript a letter a or a number a and then here we're gonna have x so this would be a to the x actually and this one would be log base a of x so <clears throat> now that I've juxtaposed them on a graph uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and write it out so if there's an exponential function a to the y equals x then there is a corresponding logarithm so we write log just short for logarithm base a so it's subscripted of x equaling y okay this is the logarithm form so I've got a little table going on here now so we've got two things we've got exponential form and logarithm form. If you have an exponential relationship like this, then there's a corresponding logarithm relationship like this. If you swap the swap the power and the answer, if you will, here we input y, here the output is y, here the input is x, here the output is x. If you swap the input and output, uh, then you then you can translate between these two things and let me illustrate what these two things mean with just a, a couple quick examples so we all know powers of 2 I think quite well so let's go with just a quick one 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2 which is 8 okay what is the corresponding logarithmic form well, that's log base 2 frequently used in computer science of 8 is 3. That's the corresponding form. So exponentials, I like to think of them as like the, the primitive thing. It's like the first thing that happens, right? 2 cubed is 8, so we can compute that. But the logarithms, they're a little bit harder to compute. You know, there's tables of them in books. So how do we interpret this logarithm? Well, essentially what we're, we're asking instead of you know what is 2 cubed we're asking what power of 2 is 8 instead of knowing the power of the base and computing the power of the base is unknown and we need to sort that out given some input we ask what it power of my base gives me that in the case of 8 and 2 as our base the answer is obviously 3 2 cubed is 8. So the answer of log base 2 of 8 is 3. How about log base 2 of 16? Well, the, the corresponding question that, I, that I've just been getting at would be what power of 2 is 16? Well, that's 4. How about 64? Log base 8, I'll change it on you, of 64 what power of 8 is 64? It's 2. 8 squared is 64. Okay, we can keep doing things like this with any base. Log base 15 of 225. We just have to ask ourselves the question to answer what this is. We have to ask ourselves, 15 to what power is 225? Because there's this corresponding exponential thing 
15 to some power, we don't know, is 225. Right? Whenever we're given a logarithmic question, we can translate to the exponential and just try and answer it ourselves, which is what I've done here. We've taken this log base 15 of 225. Maybe we don't know it. So we translate it into that exponential form. And then we look at it from a different perspective, sort of in a primitive form. Now, roots aren't going to help us here. Okay, roots won't help us. We're taking a variable exponential. We can't take a constant root, like the square root or a third root. We need to take a variable root, the yth root, to get rid of that. But that's what the logarithm does. That's what the logarithm is. Okay, so we've seen lots of examples now of, oh, by the way, this is 2. 15 squared is 225. We've seen lots of examples here now of what an exponential function is, right? And now we're seeing uh, uh, examples of logarithmic calculations. So let me write this out explicitly. Formally. Keep the graph here for you. So if a is a positive number not equal to 1, that's important, the logarithm base a is defined like what we have here. So a is positive and it's not equal to 1. Okay? Then the logarithm is defined like this. Okay? Log a of x is just the exponent the exponent of a which gives you x. Right? The logarithm base a of some number x is just the exponent of a that gives you x that gives you x, yeah. Okay? So you take this base and you think of powers of it. And whatever power of a gives you this x, that's the logarithm base a of x. Just like you saw in those examples with two earlier. Okay, so let's look at a couple, couple quick properties. Let's take any uh, positive base, any one, and uh, make sure it's not one. And we'll just ask ourselves the log base a of one. What is that? So we're asking ourselves what power of a. is 1. And the answer is 0. The 0th power of any positive number is 1. So this is the first property. If you have any base of a logarithm that is positive and not 1, if you plug in 1, the answer is always 0. Okay, second one. Let's take the log base a of a. The corresponding exponential question is the base a to what power is equal to a? This one's painfully obvious, so I won't insult you. It's 1. a to the first power is a. Okay? Third property here, third nice little thing. What if what we plug into the logarithm? is explicitly written as a power of the base. So what if I plug in a to some power to the logarithm? Right, so like I think of log base 2 of, I gave you some things earlier, like 16. What if instead of writing 16, I wrote 2 to the fourth? Well, the answer is pretty obvious then. 
it should just be whatever that power is. Okay, and this highlights a really critical fact. Logarithms and exponentials are inverse operations. If we plug in an exponential with the same base as the logarithm, they cancel each other out and we're left with just the power on the exponential. That's a pretty useful tool that we'll see here in a bit. Uh, four is the opposite discussion. We've got any base of an exponential raised to the logarithm of the same base of some thing, some input x. Just like in three, the logarithm and the exponential canceled out, we're gonna get the same thing here. This is just x. Okay. Right? Alrighty. And this, the answer to why this is the way it is, in the case of number four is, we just need to remember what log base a of x is. Log base a to the x is some number y, and that's equal to, uh, uh, excuse me, that is equal to, I'll write this out, log base a of x equals y. This is the power that we need to take a to to give us x, right? So here we've got our x. So a to what power is x? That's some power y. And what must that power be? Right, let's, let's think about this. Take, take logarithms of both sides, log base a. We'll use property three. Log base a of x on the right side. Log base a of a to the log base a of x. On the left side, logs cancel, and we're on the log. On the right side, we've got this. On the left side, what do we have? We've got just a true statement, log base a of x. Right? Right? So we've, we've canceled things out here. We've canceled, uh, and we're, we're arrived at just the exponent here. That is just the power, right? This is just the power. This logarithm literally represents the power we, we must take a to to get x, just by definition. So we get this always true statement down here because this just comes straight out of the definition of what it means to be a logarithm here, okay? In practice, we'll see this, this happen a few times. In practice, we'll be using statements three and four here quite a lot, so I'm gonna leave them up. Um, so here we go. We've got a few computations to do. Just a few examples. Log base five of five to the eighth. What is that? Well, rule three says that uh, this base is the same as this base. So the answer should just be the exponent eight. Okay, here's another one, log base five of five. What is that? Well, rule number two says We've got five for our base. We've got an exponential here that is technically five to the first. So the same bases, so that's just one. Okay, and then the last one, we've got five to the log base five of 12. Okay, what is that equal to? Number four would say that is just 12. Okay, number four would say that is just 12 because this exponential and this logarithm have the same base. Okay, but why? 
This is easily the hardest one to understand, but why, right? Well, what is this? This is a number. A number which when 5 is raised to it, so you, it, this log base 5 of 12, that's just a number. And if you raise 5 to it, okay, so I'm going to say a number x, perhaps. So 5 to the x, you get 12. OK, this logarithm base 5 of 12 is just a number, which when, when 5 is raised to it, so 5 to the x, you get 12, right? That's the definition of this logarithm base 5 of 12. It's just some number. And by definition, this is the same as saying 5 to the x is 12, right? So let me just replace this log base 5 of 12 with some number x that has this property down here. Well, by the definition, like this, this was the very definition of logarithm, when we take 5 to that power, what do we get? We get 12. So that's why that one is 12. That's, that's rule number four. And that is seeing what I wrote out earlier explicitly with real number values instead of variables and other things. OK. OK, that's, that's it for the properties of logarithms for now. Um, so let me look at a couple different common logarithms. These are common logarithms. First, you've got one that is uh, more common in uh, um, sorry, one second. Let me write these out. There's there's other ones too. So first, before I, before I um, get into how to write these things down in their shorthand, uh, these one, common logarithms are just logarithms that have a well-used base, right? The logarithm base 28 is not common, because who uses number 28 as like their common exponential one? Um, probably not too many people think of 28 as their favorite or best base value. The best quote, most used probably, bases are base 10, simply because we use the decimal number system and our numbers are base 10 inherently. Base E, then the natural exponential base that we learned about last time, that's also very commonly used because it does come up all over the place uh, in, in, in finance, perhaps in investments, um, in, in uh, well, I'll just leave it at that. In a lot of places, okay, it comes up all over the place in mathematics. So it's very commonly used. Base two is also very, very commonly used, especially in computer science. Um, so what makes these base th these logarithms common is simply that their bases are commonly used or commonly found in mathematics or sciences. And so there's usually shorthand for these things. So what I've said before is that when you have a logarithm, you write log, then you write the base and then you put the input. That's what, that's the most explicit way to write a logarithm. But with these common ones, for example, base 10, your book makes a very common shorthand, and uh, it is this, is that log base 10 of x, we will just write log of x. We're gonna not write the 10. So for this class, if, if you see a logarithm with no base, L-O-G, no base, there's actually a 10 there. It's actually base 10, OK? This is not always what people do. Sometimes this means the natural logarithm, OK? But for this class, we're going to use a different notation, which is, I think, more common. 
Okay, so for base 10 logarithms, we're, we're going to follow this convention. For base e log e of some input x, we are going to write this l n of x. That's the natural exponential base right there, e, natural exponential. So this is called the natural logarithm, which is why we have l for logarithm and n for natural. So ln of x is the natural logarithm, which is just a logarithm base e. So if you see ln of x, that really means log base e of x. And again, e is about 2.718-ish, right? OK, base 2, used in, com uh, used in computer science quite a bit. Uh, this one is sometimes written as lg. OK, it's only two letters, lg, base 2. Uh, the reason in computer science is that is because everything's founded on, in computer science at a hardware level, everything's founded on uh, ones and zeros, right? Which is a base two system. A bit is either on or off. Okay? So when you start talking about bytes, which is sets of eight bits together, and then you talk about kilobytes and megabytes and things like this, you're talking about powers of two. And so it's really handy just to have a, a logarithm that is base two that tells you exactly how many bits you've got. How many bits of information? All right, so that's it for that. Uh, the same properties that we held, that we talked about before with uh, log or ln or log base two, uh, where we talked about ln of one or ln of e, those, sa those same things uh, apply bef just the same. So we're not gonna go into that. Uh, and log base 10, same thing applies from before, so we're not going to go into that. Uh, and log base 2, we're not going to do that either. Again, these are just the properties that I went over with um, the four properties I said earlier. Your book does. I won't. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph some logarithms for you. So I'm going to use the full screen here. And we'll make a table in the, yeah, sure, the bottom left. All right, so we'll have our input, x, and <clears throat> let's do base 10. We could pick any base, uh, but uh, we'll, just, we'll go with base 10 because it's easy to compute. So first off, Let's pick a negative number. So when we plug in negative 1, what do we get? Well, if we remember what logarithms mean, this won't make any sense. So we plug in negative 1, and then we're like, oh, OK, that, I guess that's some number, y, or x, whatever. And it's, it's the number that corresponds to this, the power of 10, which is negative 1. and our heads are spinning. That doesn't make any sense. So we, we don't have anything graphed on the left side of this coordinate plane. There's nothing over here. Everything is going to be over here. OK, so no negative inputs here. But we can answer things like 1. And I'm going to start compressing things here. There's one. <laughs> and what do we get when we plug in one? Well, that's 10 to what power is one? It's zero, right? The zeroth power of 10 is one. So we get this point here. How about? One tenth. One tenth is like in between right here. Just one tenth. It's a really small number. Ten to what power is one tenth? It's negative one. So at one tenth, 
we're down here at 1 one hundredth. If I just keep adding zeros here, 10 to what power is 1 over 100? Well, that's negative 2. So we're down here. Okay, we can just keep going. 1 1,000th. One it's going to be negative 3. And I think you're seeing something really, really interesting. Maybe. You maybe don't consider it interesting, but I certainly do. We're getting a lot smaller. 10 times smaller every step here. Right? 1 1,000th one is, is a thousand times less than 1. But the logarithm is three. Three less. Not three times less, it's three less. Logarithms have this, this nice property that they they don't change very quickly. <laughs> like, like not at all. Um, for example, what's the log base 10 of a million? That's a million times bigger than one. But a million is just 10 to the sixth. So the logarithm base 10 of a million is six. So if I go way over here to a million, let me just say it's right there. We're only at a height of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's right, kind of about right there. And on the computer screen, it, on the video, it's not visible. Okay, there we go. It's right about there. Okay. So let's graph the rest of this. If, if we if we put in ten, we would have one. If we put in a hundred, we'd have two. So we get these. We get this curve that basically is right up next to the y-axis. It crosses through the point 1, 0. That was one of those four properties we talked about earlier. And then it just slowly, slowly increases. And it gets slower and slower and slower over time. It levels off. It, it never actually levels off, but it start, It tries to level off as best it can. But it still goes to infinity. It still gets as high as it possibly can. Okay, the further you go to the right, the further up it goes. Okay. So this is, uh, this is the graph of log base 10 of x. Um, again, there's some nice points here. Uh, this point here, corresponds to 10, 1. This point here corresponds to 100, 2. So you plugged in 100 and you got 2. This point 3 here is 1,000, comma 3. You plug in 1,000 and you have 3 because 10 to the third is 1,000. And every point here that's at an integer value, height, is just at some power of 10. 10,000, 4. We can just keep going down the list. Okay. So this is the, the generic graph of a logarithm. And uh, yeah, we can apply the same sort of transformations we did with before with negatives, flipping this thing across the x-axis, right? Negative log base 10 of x. It's just the flip of this thing. Looks something like this like that. Okay, or we can shift them left and right by adjusting x. We can flip it across the y-axis by taking negative x as our input. And we can shift it up and down by adding some constant or subtracting some constant. We can multiply it by some constant, the whole thing, and then we can stretch it vertically. We can multiply the input, and we can, we can compress it horizontally, or stretch it horizontally. So we have all those same old, old uh, transformation properties as well because this is a function um, and it's always increasing and it just does so ever so slowly so it, it's a really nice function uh, and it the reason it's in so many books is because when you're working with really 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 big data 
like huge numbers, it's easier to work with the logarithm of that big number because as you can see from this graph and from this table, if you take the logarithm of a giant number, like a million, what do you get? Well, you get six. Six is easy to write down. It doesn't take much to write. So if you're writing computations out and you're writing a million over and over again, that takes a lot of time. Six is one, one stroke of the hand. Okay, so that's why there's a lot of data that's really big, right? You think of astronomy, you think of chemistry and physics and biology. There's a lot of data out there that has huge numbers in it that you do computations with by hand, especially back in the day before calculators. So it makes sense to have tables of these things so that you can quickly look up the logarithm of a giant number <laughs> and just know what it is. Okay? All right, so that's it for section 4.3 on logarithm functions. Uh, we saw some properties of them. We looked at some common bases of them, and we looked at a graph. So uh, next time we'll come back, we'll come back with 4.4, which is laws of logarithms. That's where it's going to get real. We'll learn about uh, how you can do arithmetic with these things, and uh, yeah, then we'll we'll become experts on logarithms. So I'll see you next time. I hope that helps.